we are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Stephen Jill here. Hi. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun. Today's Jack Thursday, and I'm gonna talk about the psychology behind being a real estate agent versus a, a land or real estate investor. I'm a little nervous. No, it's not a rant. Okay, Whew, good, okay. I mean, the, 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 the gist of it is this. There's, there are, I, I came up with this concept because if you go on YouTube and you see it and you type in something like how to be a real estate lawyer or how much do real estate agents make and the the uh, the number of people that have viewed it in the last week is in the millions in some cases or tens of thousands. And there's all different reasons for that. But if you go on to most YouTube places, uh, even the really popular ones about how to be a, a real estate investor, it's a lot fewer people. So there's some psychology behind this and I think I know why. That explains our numbers behind our shows. <laughs> yeah. Jill and I get about six or seven views per uh, episode. We should title these. We should just copy and use the titles that work and then just do whatever show we want. This is the whole point. I'm going to read this because you're going to read the question. So first, let's take a question post for one of our members on the Land Investors Online Community. It's free. And please do not forget to subscribe to the Land Academy YouTube channel and comment on the shows that you like. Before I read this, Jill and I have every other Thursday, she hosts a, a clubhouse talk. It's, an, it's a, a new app driven version of an old school talk show radio show. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people can call in or, or dial up and dial in and we move them up to our, she moves them up and they ask questions and we talk with them. And, and uh, if we do everything right, it, it's to the benefit of everyone who's listening. Right. I actually, I, I really enjoy it. It's a chance for us not to be on in front of a camera. It's audio only, and we really can because the audience is not that large. Really, uh, I think do some good to the people that are there. They want to be there and just be truthful. Mm -hmm. So, Aaron has an opinion about <laughs> our last clubhouse talk, and here it is. Okay. He says, I listened to the last clubhouse, and sorry if this comes off harsh, but whoever is thinking that turning land investing into a private equity fund. You'll, you'll thank me one day. It's an awful idea. I've worked and consulted with various funds in my time from uh, algorithmic, other algorithmic stock and futures trading to hard money lending uh, funds and reg, reg 506 B and C all day long. Why is this such a bad idea? Well, remember how Zillow came up with and tried to beat everyone at the real estate investing game? They, uh, they too thought that they were smart. <laughs> I love this stuff. They took the attitude that they could buy houses for higher prices than anyone else. And since they had the best data and a handful of other profit centers that it would all balance out in the end and they would own the real estate, all the real estate in America. There's uh, expletives in here that I can't say or read uh, out loud. You too can follow their glorious crash, crash and burn on the investing side of things. Go start a fund, be pressured to do deals because people keep throwing cash at you, and all you have to sh and uh, you have to show something. You have to show something in the next quarter, other than all the cash that's sitting in your Wells Fargo bank uh, money market account. So you buy a property for too much, but it's okay because you get a management fee. This is this is what I'm getting at. I hear you. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> There's fees, 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 fees. Uh -huh. That's where you make money, not actually buy anything intelligent. So it's okay. Uh, you get a management fee. Well, this snowballs further. You can say uh, no to you can say no no to deals because honestly, your investors uh, will be just fine and bu to buy it at eighty percent of retail. It's still a good return. And these are just passive uh, investing pension types. So you market so you market destruction the hell out of the land investing world. You get your management fee on billions and barely make a profit on any deals and it's okay. You're covered. That's the market. You cornered the market. Yeah. 
Then you have to admit that returns are mediocre at best. Your early investors see a new shiny object in the crypto or comic books uh, from the 90s or, or whatever, and your management fee starts to shrink. For the first time in six years, and you start to t <laughs> you start talking to your wife about doing something away from the corporate world. Do yourself a favor and realize that land investing is already as pros profitable as it's going to get. I could not agree more. You don't need partners. There's capital out there uh, for you know a 50% of retail offer. Um, come on, guys, the economy, really? You're offering 50%? You don't even know? He, he goes on. So I'm gonna leave it at this. Um, he goes on for a while and uh, ultimately says you're welcome, which I love. Here's the thing. This all started because, and this is my response in Discord. Jill and I had a very healthy, I think, uh, healthy talk about. You shared that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. In 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 uh, on Clubhouse, this where what prompted this this whole oh, rant. Yeah. Uh, our our discussion was not about hey, let's just start a fund. Right. That's not what it was at all. I would never, ever start a fund for the, all the reasons he's saying. But we could. Jill and I could start a fund tomorrow. Yeah. And we would be forced to make bad decision, uh, bad decisions, land acquisition decisions the next day. And we don't right now. We make great acquisition decisions because we don't report to anyone and there's no fees involved. And if we do great, we make a bunch of money. If we don't, we lose a bunch of money the way the world was intended to be. That's not what happens in that private equity world. The confusion started with him. And I uh, and I say this, you know, with a smile on my face. What I said was the structure of buying and selling land and then sometimes getting it funded the way that we do internally in our group is the same structure that's been bastardized and wrecked uh, in private equity. It's still the same structure and in our case it works. Mm -hmm. And I think in the funding case, it's just, it's what uh, Aaron described. I can go into it, but that's not really the topic. Understood. Today's Jack Thursday, I'm gonna talk about the psychology behind being a real estate agent versus uh, a land or a real estate investor. This is why you're listening. There's some psychology behind taking on your own personal risk and reaping the reward from that or taking personal responsibility for the failure or whatever happens in between. For whatever reason, Jill, you from the day one, since the day I've met you, have been hardwired to accept failure and celebrate uh, success. It's very, Thanks. very, very unusual. So I bring this up earlier in the uh, show because there's so many people are dying to be real estate agents, and, but they're not dying to be real estate investors. Or mm -hmm. people are dying to be lawyers. They're just dying to represent somebody and get paid to represent them. But they're not running around trying to be a real estate investor and, or be an entrepreneur that needs a lawyer and needs some legal advice. Mm -hmm. So let's think about that for a second. Why would somebody just want to represent somebody else for fees? And why would another personality type like Jill and uh, honestly like me want to take the risk and reward? I'm asking. I think it's nature. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I think people, and it's not just real estate agents, for whatever reason, are very comfortable taking f money from other people and theoretically doing stuff to get that money versus buying something and selling it for more or buying the components in a manufacturing situation, buying 19 components for uh, $10, putting it all together, packaging it up and selling it for 25. I think it's fear. I think it's nothing good. I think a lot of it, it's fear. I'm afraid to put my, I'm afraid to, let me tell you a story. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's a holiday weekend. Go for it. It was after the holiday weekend. <laughs> oh, right. By the time this airs, you're like, come on, get back to it. No, like, <laughs> like I this very, very, I have this very, very sweet friend. Her name is Cammie. I couldn't get her. She would, she still to this day says, Jill, I'm happy to live vicariously through you. She never wanted to be the one getting out of the car and toilet papering somebody's house, but she'd be happy sitting in the car when I say, hit the gas, let's get out of here, kind of thing. Um, so, so I think that there's a healthy amount of people that 
like being on the sidelines. They hope to be part of it and they enjoy the process a little bit, but like, oh no, I don't have the, they don't have the, um, the threshold for some reason to to just dive in and go for it. And then there's others like, this is, this is truth time. This is sometimes where I get myself in trouble. I'm like, sure, okay, I'll get on, I'll try it. You know, stand back everybody because I'm not sure what's gonna happen when I start this thing. You know, but I'm like, all right, let's just do it. I'll figure it out kind of thing. Now, as I have aged, I like to think, never mind, my hands are all bandaged up from all kinds of things here, but I like to think that I've developed a little bit of a safety pause and fear. Like, you think I need a helmet? Might be a good idea. I think I will put a helmet on today. But <laughs> there's times that I'm like, oh, a helmet might have been good, but I didn't need a helmet. I'll worked out fine. I'm just going to go for it. So I think that that's, for me, that's, I think that's why I say my nature. I think that I, and it's not like, cause trust me, it's not like I learned this over time. Like, cause I've done things wrong and screwed things up. Jill and I just had a very long, very expensive meeting with a New York lawyer about uh, some business ideas that we have about the future. And his specialization was, he was a great specialist for what he specialized in and how we are trying to apply what he specializes in didn't get through to him. And, and he didn't, that didn't matter to him. It, it didn't, it, the clicking part of it didn't matter. What mattered to him is that he was in, in the middle of a billable hour with a beautiful background of New York City. And and I believe that that's mostly what, it's the process that he enjoys, not, you know, I, I was a commercial real estate broker at the very begin, beginning of my career and from the very first phone call that I took with a, our apartment building owner because I was trying to sell him an apartment building from a different, by a different owner, all I said to myself was, I want to be on the other end of that phone. Hmm. I don't, I'm halfway embarrassed that I'm actually putting this deal together and taking a fee for it. It's embarrassing. Fees are embarrassing. Hmm. Billable hours are embarrassing. The only, what matters in life is actually owning something and then cre creating something with it, creating equity uh, with it or teaching somebody else how to do it. Something that actually matters. Mm -hmm not just representing somebody else and getting in the way. They're getting in the way of the deal. That If we took every word to heart that that lawyer uh, told us today, we'd be broke in, mm. in a couple of years. I hear you. I'm still in my head thinking about that conversation and thinking I got a lot out of it, number one. There's some nuggets in there. Uh, and I still think there's could be a way to do what we want to do um, and if anything, um, I don't know. I know what to watch out for. I know some things to watch yeah, out I mean, for. Yeah, I mean, I agree. And, and you know, look, I'm gonna talk out of the other side of my mouth now. We hire real estate agents all the time and expect them to sell land for us. Mm -hmm. And, and when, you know what I don't do ever, and neither does Jill, for some reason we're on the same page on this completely, is skimp on the price. We are happy to pay them a full 10% on any land deal that they sell, mm -hmm. I'm never going to skimp out on on mm -hmm. paying or trying to get a, a cheaper fee. But I, I expect them to do the job and get it done, mm -hmm. which you know half the time happens. It seems like maybe it's probably better than that. It's just I only hear about the bad ones, not the good ones. Isn't that funny? I mean, I never go no, make it this percent, and you can have my property. I never do that. <laughs> I'm like, can you get that price in those many days and go? You know, all right, done. <laughs> I still can't imagine enthusiastically saying, all right, great, I got the list and now I'm gonna go sell this. I'm gonna go take out, I'll take a look at the property and take some great pictures, get a, uh, you know, a drone operator out there and we're gonna, maybe I'll even clear the property a little bit if I need to, to get somebody and we'll sell this thing in a couple of weeks. I don't in the, my head ever have that vision of a commercial real estate agent actually being into their job and trying to succeed the way that you are. You hit the ground running in the morning. Right. You get on the phone and you're you're buying and selling land or, or you know dreaming up the, whatever the next thing is for us to do. And and uh, right. honestly, so am I. More so in Land Academy and Jill more so in, in the actual land business. Mm -hmm. So I just don't see being representing somebody with enthusiasm. You know what? Well, lucky for us that we have those people. I'm good with that too. Like I'm, I can end it on this. Uh, 
they're, they don't have the threshold that I have. Then maybe they did maybe when they started out, I think some people start out like they didn't have the capital to do it or they didn't know the means to do it. And, and then they get settled in, you know, and maybe in for whatever reason, so now they're settled in and they love it. Um, or they really still don't have the, the confidence to break off and do it, whatever it is. I'm happy for, I'm happy and grateful for those of you, um, awesome land agents that do deals for us in the land academy community. Cause we need you. That's all I have to say. Me too. <laughs> happy you could join us today. Five days a week. You can find us here on the land academy show. Tomorrow, the, well, tomorrow's Jill Friday and she's going to talk about embracing the hate and sending out more mail. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I feel like I just talked about that recently. You think? Yeah, it's come up a little bit, but it's fine. I'll talk about it a little bit more. <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you ask me questions. Yeah, so remember when I walked in your office about three hours ago and I said, hey, do you need to check the uh, top topics for today? Do you want to sign no, off? And no, you said, I oh no, I trust you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to talk about it. I'll come up with some. That's what I said. I'll let you ask me some questions or something. We'll change it up. Right. Okay. Maybe we can role play. I don't know. Figure it out. Hey, thanks for tuning in. And again, we hope you find our content valuable. And we really do appreciate your support. So if you haven't already, check out our YouTube channel. There's a lot of stuff there, by the way. I was looking at just yesterday. There's a lot about career path. A lot about our weekly member call, some all kinds of really good uh, information that if you're thinking about doing this, you're going to want to check out. And if you are in Land Academy, by the way, make sure you're with us on Discord. We, we are Jack, Jack and Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 